Got a 3D printer for Christmas? Here are the top things that you can print on your 3D printer that are ham radio related. Stay tuned. Hello all, Kyle here, AA0Z, with a different type of video. We're not going to be doing any really ham radio related stuff here, but we are going to be talking about 3D printers, and maybe you got a 3D printer for Christmas, or the holidays, maybe you got some cash and you're going to buy a 3D printer. I'm going to show you some of the 3D prints that I have created, and then also uh, we'll go over uh, some of the 3D printers, and then take a look at some of the prints that people have put out on Thingiverse. So, let's get started. Here are some, probably the three biggest printers that uh, are out on the market today. Prusa Printers is a very good printer. Uh, it is relatively expensive, but it is top quality. I have a Prusa printer, and uh, it is very good. Um, took very little time and effort to set up. Once you get it all dialed in, it, uh, it, it can be a challenge getting it dialed in, but once you have it set, uh, it, it is set and forget. I would not put, if you're a first-time buyer for 3D printers, I would not put a printer in a basement where it's cool. Printers and filament like to be at room temperature, so I would find a place where it's a little bit warmer and it will print a lot better. But here are <clears throat> here are the 3D printers that probably I would recommend as a first-time buyer. Uh, of course, the, the Prusa, you can buy it as a kit or you can buy it uh, pre-made. Uh, this Ender 3D or Ender 3 is another good one. Now, it's only $160. I don't know how good it is, but I have heard uh, it personally, but I have heard good things about it. Uh, so Ender is another good quality printer. And then Monoprice has got a printer. Uh, again, I don't know how good it is, but I have heard some good things about it. Uh, I think your mileage will vary depending on, you know, where you put the printer in your house, how much time and effort you, you spend setting it up and making sure the bed is level and, uh, you know, the different options that you can get. And keep in mind, even after you buy the printer, you can print items to make your printer better. So it will, once you get it all set up, you'll probably want to do some, some modifications to it and print some things that uh, make your printer better and uh, easier to print. Another thing that you might want to try is a piece of software called Octoprint. It runs on a Raspberry Pi, plugs into most of the printers, and does a lot of statistics and prints things and basically serves as a wired or wireless uh, print server so you can send things to the printer automatically and it will automatically uh, start printing um, based on you know the settings that you've got in your Octoprint. So take a look at Octoprint. It is a very uh, cool program. It is free. I think if you go to Google to talk to print, uh, you'll find it. So these are the three printers that I would probably recommend getting started. If you got one of these for the holidays, congratulations. Uh, you will spend, it'll, you will go down a rabbit hole and spend a ton of time and effort and money and uh, um, whatever, getting your printer to print and printing all the things that you want to print. And it is endless on all the little things that you can print. Um, and as you get more experience, you'll find that you'll get into Tinkercad, which is a program that allows you to um, design different things for your 3D printer. You'll be getting into Tinkercad and figuring out, oh, I could probably print this easier than I can buy it or, or um, uh, manufacture it out of wood or something else. So you, you'll find that y as your level, as you go along in this journey, you'll you'll be stepping up on levels on trying to figure out, um, you know, things that you can print and then all the, also things that you can design. Uh, Fusion 360 is another free program, relatively free. It has some uh, uh, challenges there with creator versus um, uh, people that use it professionally. So take a look at that. Um, 
but Tinkercad is probably the easiest on just getting started with, with basic stuff. So after you get your 3D printer all set up, you need to know where to go to find 3D printer STL files to stick in your slicer, which is a program that slices it into uh, different levels so your 3D printer can actually print it, is a search engine. So I typically use the MakerBot Thingiverse. It is probably one of the biggest repositories of STL files. If you're a designer I, uh, or if you design something, I suggest you uh, make a uh, login on Thingiverse and share your items on the Creative Commons uh, license so other people can download it and use it and remix it. But mostly all of the things, well, all of the things that I'm going to be presenting, uh, you can find on Thingiverse. That is Thing, T-H-I-N-G-I-V-E-R-S-E dot com. Sometimes the website is a little slow, especially whenever there's a lot of people on it. Um, but it is a very good uh, place where you can go and, and find STL files. And uh, that's what we're going to be using today to take a look at some sample stuff. Once you have your printer set up, obviously you want to print something. And I put together a list of all, all ham radio related things that you could print starting out. First batch here is CW and straight key prints. Uh, I have printed out this uh, iamic paddle by Really Big Teeth, Baba Booey, and it works great. Um, there is a spring that pushes these two paddles apart. I would, you can print a spring. I would get a ballpoint pen spring or a, a ballpoint pen, yeah, a ballpoint pen spring and stick it between the paddles and you can adjust it up and down for uh, how uh, uh, close and the resistance between uh, um, hitting that center post to make your dits and daws. So that is uh, um, some neat things that you can print. Um, this one is a, is a cool print also. It's got, uh, uses, uh, it's not this one, hang on. It is, there it is, it's this one. And it uses uh, skateboard bearings to keep the paddles free, and I believe it also uses magnets. Uh, so it's probably got pretty good feel, depending on um, how good your printer is and how exact it is. And let's see, what else? Uh, so there's some things that are in flux here. Here's a really cool 3D printed paddle. That looks like it uh, is on a base and has some metal components in there, so you might want to take a look at some extra hardware that you might have to buy, but that's a really cool 3D printed. And then someone took uh, the Pico Morse paddle or the Pico Paddle, is not made anymore. I forget who made it. I think it was a guy over in Europe that made them. And it was a paddle that had retractable paddles here, and you could push those into this base, and it was very compact. Uh, a lot of people, soda and portable operators, like to, to use it. So someone decided that, uh, hey, I can't buy this anymore. I'm going to 3D print one. So... Uh, if you type in Pico Morse Paddle, it's still a work in progress, but I think that uh, the guy has uh, made some progress on it. Um, oh, and he's got a mini version here, too. Ah, here it is. Here is the, is the original. So if you type in mini Morse Paddle, here is basically the, the 3D printed files that you can slice and put on your printer. A lot of gadgetry, gadgetry in there, if I could say the word. So this is more than just putting a, putting a print uh, down on your, your print bed and uh, in a couple hours having a, a Morse code paddle. It looks like you got some other things that you need to, to do. But that Pico paddle is, is really, really neat. And then, of course, you've got some straight keys here. You've got a very basic straight key. 
You've got some uh, more advanced straight keys over here. A um, lot of different straight, cre straight keys that you can print, uh, 3D print, that uh, can get you up and running um, in a pinch if uh, you needed to, to get on the air and wanted to, to send some Morse code. Second batch of prints here are dipole centers. So once you get up and running with your amateur radio shack, next thing is to put an antenna up, right? So you can print out a lot of dipole centers. If you're going to keep these outside, I would highly suggest that you print these in PETG, not PLA, uh, because PLA will warp in the sun. PETG does a little bit better. You'll want to do some research on filament types, on which ones are the best to keep outside. But you can see here, this. Uh, here are all the different... I'm on the wrong screen. Here are all the different uh, dipole centers that you can print out. I've printed out this one. It's a very good, robust, heavy-duty... Um, and keep in mind, whenever you print these prints, you can beef up the walls and um, instead of like 25% infill, you can do 100% infill, which will strengthen these, uh, these centers to make them uh, uh, more durable. So I've printed out that one. It's very good quality. Uh, I've also printed out this one. And I think that this one is done by a YouTuber, uh, Ke uh, Kevin Lof uh, Loughlin, Loughborough. Um, old, uh, old ham radio dude, old tech guy, old... Uh, I'll put the description below. I forget to his YouTube page. Um, but he designed this one in Tinkercad. And there are a bunch of others. There's four pages here. Let's go into page number two here. Uh, so now we're getting into some Yagi's and some other um, some other centers, dipole uh, centers here. You know, the nice thing about these dipole centers is if there are, or anything on Thingiverse, once you make an account, um, you can shoot this off and remix it and uh, does, you know add to it, subtract to it, and print it out and put it back on Thingiverse as a remix. Uh, so therefore, you might... You might have a need, and someone else has that same need, and you can um, share uh, files or the remixes with uh, other users. After you have the dipole up, you're going to need some dog bones. So those are the insulators that go at the end of the um, wire. So here are some two dog bone insulators that you can print out. Here is pretty, a pretty standard one, and here's a more sleek one. So you'll probably want to, to print those out too. And if you're going on a fox hunt or you need a two-meter Yagi, here's some plans to make some Yagis. And a lot of these uh, are just the support ends for the director and the reflector and the radiator. And then you have to um, produce your own uh, middle section or center section here. And here's a, here's a good example here where you're a tape measure Yagi. So you're supplying this metal um, center here and you're printing out these ends. And um, obviously you're supplying the tape measure too, but then um, you're able to secure the tape measure end to these, these 3D printed parts, which is kind of cool. Um, if you ever built a tape measure Yagi, it is very simple. Uh, the measurements are right there on the tape measure, and uh, it provides uh, a good uh, a good way to to teach somebody uh, um, attenuation during a fox hunt with uh, with attenuator and a tape measure Yagi. So some cool stuff there. So maybe some of you got a Zoom spot for Christmas, and you need a case for it. So you can print out some zoom spot cases here are some on the screen and even if you uh, don't have a zoom spot this reminds me you can pi I don't know if I spelt it right raspberry pi cases there are a ton of raspberry pi cases on thingiverse so 
Um, even if you got a hat for a Raspberry Pi, you could easily um, print one of these out and modify it with a Dremel tool or potentially remix it on your own. Some of these don't have tops on them, so you could put the Pi um, or the, the um, hotspot add-on directly on there. So there's some ideas for hotspots and zoom spots. All right, into radio manufacturers. So I've got some tabs up here for uh, the radio major man, uh, radio manufacturers. So you got KX3, Elecraft. There's a ton of things that you can print out for the Elecraft KX2 and the KX3. There's uh, this uh, power pole adapter that you can print out. There's the um, antenna uh, support some stands, uh, some new knobs that you can uh, print out, even uh, putting the, uh, the CW paddles on your leg for supports. So there's a lot of things that you can print out for the KX3. Here is some Yesu stuff. And I have printed out, uh, I'll show you in a bit, these uh, protectors for, well, I don't have an 8, uh, 818, but uh, where is the protector for the 891? There it is. The 891. I have printed out one of these. There it is. Uh, that is not mine, but I did mine in red. I'll show you in a bit. But uh, now there's a lot of things that you can print out for Yesu. I believe that this stand here fits the FT2D and the FT3D. That's something cool that you can print out to uh, put your HT on the... Um, on the tabletop, here are some things from ICOM that you can print out. Looks like uh, some uh, ID5100 brackets. Looks like some other brackets to, to mount uh, detachable heads. And then maybe you got a 705 for Christmas and you have a 3D printer. There are quite a bit of 705 accessories and things that you can print out, mostly stands. This antenna bracket is really cool. So it is uh, um, bolts to the side of it, and you can put a mobile antenna. I believe that there is another version of this that uh, sells uh, for uh, probably quite a bit more money than you can 3D print it. Here's another mobile antenna bracket. Looks like this one might have been remixed from the first one. Not sure which one came first, but that's a cool idea. So there's all the things 705. Here's some Kenwood things. Here's a uh, TMD 710 RAM mount ball. Oh, we've got some more uh, mounts here. I will show you, see if I can get to mine that I've designed. Let's see if it, it even pops up here. It is for the, no, it's not even in here. Do 891. Let's search for Yesu 891. Here we go. So I have designed a bracket that mounts to a RAM ball, and it is a support for your 891. So it bolts to the back of it, gives a little bit more support, and you can um, mount that to anything that is compatible with the RAM balls. And then also here is my bracket for the Kenwood uh, D710GA, and then also the 891 right above it. So I designed this in Fusion 360. There's a close-up of, of the, uh, the ball there. And it took me quite a few prints to get this right and the holes lined up and everything, but um, yeah, that is something that I have designed on my own. Go check it out. The Zaigu Shaju Shijaja uh, G90. So I think that uh, this is a popular QRP-ish radio, 20 watts. Lots of stands and some accessories that you can print out 3D on your 3D printer. So check that out if you got a G90. So let's end it here with some resources that you might want to check out. You go over to Ham Radio Crash Course Discord. 
there is a 3D printer or 3D printing um, forum, Discord, that we all talk about different types of 3D printing. Um, you can see a 3D chessboard. There is uh, a lot of non-ham talk in here about 3D printing. So if you have questions about your 3D printer or um, you're stuck, might be a good place to hang out and ask some questions. There is also, I um, subscribe to the Prusa 3D printer Discord. I'm sure that there is probably a Discord for your 3D printer where you can hang out and ask questions. And then if you go over to Facebook, there is a 3D printer printing for ham radio. And you can post different things in this group and uh, ask questions and um, get some support for the different things that you're printing. So, so that is all I had. Hope that you found this educational and inspirational. And maybe you will go out and design some 3D printed ham radio related stuff. And we will catch you later.